Hello, business analytics superstars, and welcome to chapter seven, sampling and sampling distributions. It might sound simple at first. After all, how hard can it be to pick a few items out of a larger group? But like most things in life, sampling is both art and science, and getting it right is far more important and trickier than it seems at first glance. Let's start with a quick thought experiment. Imagine choosing a random number between 1 and 10. Easy, right? Well, beware selection bias, as I suspect many of you chose 7, or at least another high number, given our brain's bias. But now imagine trying to pick a group of people from a population of millions and making sure they represent the full diversity of opinions, preferences, or behaviours in that population. Suddenly, things get a lot more complex. In an ideal world, we would always use a census, meaning we'd ask every single person in the population. However, for very large populations, uh, countries, markets, or industries, a census is expensive, time-consuming, and often impossible. So we use a sample, a smaller subset that should, if done properly, represent the whole population. But here's where the challenge lies. How do we know that the sample we select is truly representative of the population? Spoiler alert, it's not always easy and things can go wrong. When you think you've got a perfectly good sample, but it doesn't really represent the population, uh, that's called sampling error. We can't avoid sampling error entirely. After all, nothing in life is perfect we can learn how to minimize it, and just as importantly, how to measure it, using tools like sampling distributions. By the end of this chapter, you'll know how to handle sampling like a pro, uh, dodging common pitfalls, and making sure your data is as reliable as possible. So let's start with the basics. Sampling is about more than just picking names out of a hat. It's a structured process with specific steps, and each one is critical to ensuring that your sample is accurate. So here's a quick roadmap of the sampling design process. Uh, before you can sample, you need to know who or what you're sampling. Are you looking at consumers in a particular region, uh, employees at a company? Uh, this step is key because if you define your population incorrectly, uh, no sampling method uh, can save you. Once you know your population, uh, for random sampling, you need a list or method to identify every possible member of that group. This is your sampling frame. Uh, think of it uh, as the pool from which you'll be drawing your sample. However, be careful. Um, if your frame doesn't include all relevant members, or includes too many irrelevant ones, your results could be skewed. There are two broad categories of sampling, random and non-random. Random sampling, as the name suggests, involves selecting members of the population purely by chance. Uh, Non-random sampling, on the other hand, is a bit more uh, selective, and while it has its uses, uh, it introduces more risk of selection bias. Uh, i.e. when you choose a number between 1 and 10, many of you would have had uh, an unconscious bias towards 7 or other high numbers. Once you've decided on your technique, it's now time to draw your sample and collect the data. This is the point where you hope all your planning pays off, uh, because now you're committed. Now let's dive into those sampling techniques a little bit. Simple random sampling, uh, it's like flipping a fair coin. It ensures everyone uh, in the population has an equal chance of being selected. Uh, this uh, eliminates selection bias and gives us a shot at that elusive goal, representativeness. But there's also non-random sampling techniques where decisions about who to sample are not left entirely to chance. Uh, this could be useful in some scenarios, uh, like when you need a specific insights from a particular group. However, it comes with a higher risk of bias because you're deliberately choosing certain individuals, uh, possibly uh, leaving out critical perspectives. Uh, for example, uh, if you're trying to gauge public opinion but only survey people in an upscale neighborhood, uh, your results may be skewed towards certain demographics, uh, missing the broader picture. 
And that's not the kind of sampling error that you want to explain to your boss or indeed your client. Even when we use random sampling, there's still no guarantee that our sample will perfectly match the population. There's always the possibility of, you guessed it, sampling error. But all is not lost. We can quantify this error using sampling distributions. So a sampling distribution uh, is essentially a, a theoretical distribution uh, that shows how a sample statistic, like the sample mean, would vary if we took many samples from the same population. Think of it as a collection of what-if scenarios all stacked up together to show us the range of possible outcomes. Sampling distributions help us answer key questions such as uh, how likely is it that our sample mean is close to the true population mean? Or uh, what's the probability that we'll observe a sample with extreme values? By understanding sampling distributions, uh, we can then make inferences about the population with confidence. For example, uh, you'll learn how to calculate the standard error of the mean, uh, a measure of how much uh, the sample mean uh, is expected to vary from the population mean. Uh, this helps you uh, gauge the reliability of your sample and, in turn, your conclusions. So what's the big takeaway? Sampling might seem straightforward at first, but doing it right uh, requires careful planning and an understanding of the risks involved. Uh, by choosing the right sampling technique, minimizing bias and using sampling distributions to measure error, uh, you'll be able uh, to make accurate and uh, meaningful uh, inferences about your population uh, without uh, needing to survey every single person. Uh, in this chapter, you'll not only learn how to design a sampling process from start to finish, but also how to compare random and non-random techniques and how to use uh, sampling distributions to assess the accuracy of your results. Uh, by the time you're done, you'll be able to uh, confidently explain how sampling works, identify potential pitfalls, and most importantly, make informed decisions based on your data. So, superstars, are you ready? Seven out of ten.